Good morning and welcome back to my channel. If this is your first time, I hope you decide to like and subscribe. We are taking our morning devotions from Brenda Kuhneman's book, The Daily Prophecy. It's a muggy day outside, so I decided to stay indoors. I was, I was outside yesterday and I got very hot and sweaty. I'm sure you may have seen. <laughs> Excuse me. Um, today is Thursday, July 29th. I cannot believe we are in the last couple of days of July. I got a little bit of a hiccup going on. Our devotion today is entitled Awakened to Light. Let's hear the prophecy. It's not the hour to become weary and tired or to be lulled to sleep. For it's the time now to rise up in those areas that you have become lethargic and be awakened to the light once again. For even now, a new beam of heavenly light shines upon you. Our scripture comes from Ephesians chapter 5, verse 14. Wherefore, he says, Awake thou that sleeps, and arise from the dead, and Christ shall give you light. Oh, I love being led by the Lord in all things. I miss it sometimes. I misinterpret what he's what he's saying to me, but I do my best to listen to everything that he's saying to me, and I try to follow and be obedient. And there are times God will shine an air, shine a light on an area where, you know, we may have slacked off or, you know, let go or haven't been paying attention to. And I love it when the Holy Spirit gives us a nudge. Amen. <laughs> Let's hear how Brenda expounds on this. Sometimes we let the truths that we know as part of our spiritual root system grow dim. It happens when we get sidetracked, too busy, and sometimes tired of fighting many battles. I've been there. Sometimes we get lethargic, simply because we are too lazy in our walk with God. I'm going to sit right there for a few minutes. Because being lazy in our walk with the Lord is something I'm guilty of, and I'm sure many of you are guilty of. We almost feel, and this I know is from the devil, as if we're having a one-sided conversation. And that's because we're not taking the time to listen. We're so busy, 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 busy. We can't just settle our minds and allow the Holy Spirit to speak to us. So it can feel like we're having a one-sided conversation. And we probably are because we haven't let God speak back to us and give us the direction we're seeking because we want it now, 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 now. I'm guilty. I am guilty. And with that, we could just be on the go, 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 and things fall by the wayside. And, or we get sidetracked, as she said. We're too lazy to take the time in our walk with God. Let's hear how she further expounds on this. Boy, this is really speaking to me. Signs of spiritual lethargy are loss of interest in Bible reading, prayer, and church attendance. I'm going to stop right there too. Church attendance, that is probably the number one thing. Now, I've always felt I needed to be in church, the worship, the atmosphere, being around brothers and sisters in Christ. But many people will use, I don't need to go to church to be a Christian. It's true. You don't. You don't. Church is there. God tells us we're not to forsake the assembling together of others. Now, People are flawed. I get it. If there's one person in a church, the church is already flawed. You aren't going to find a perfect church because there are broken people who are trying to find their way and grow in their own spirit. You're going to have flat out people who do wrong things. I've been wronged more by the people of God than people of this world. Believe it or not. That's really sad. That is really sad. Most of my hurts have come from people who claim the name of Christ. That's not a reason to walk away from God and to stop attending. We are there not just to hear the word inspired by the Lord to the pastor. Pastors and teachers in the church have been gifted by God 
with special anointings so that we as the body of Christ can grow, that we can receive revelation. They also have the responsibility to allow the gifts of the Holy Spirit to be flowing. And if those things aren't happening, seek the Lord about where to attend. Most people go where they traditionally, where their families have gone. All right. I grew up in a different denomination than, than where I attend church now growing up. It was very liturgical. I told many people I grew up Catholic. I'm not putting down Catholicism in any way because my first encounter with the Holy Spirit was in the Catholic Church. Okay, so that's not that. You have to go where the Holy Spirit is leading you, where you're being fed, where the gifts of the Spirit are being allowed to, um, to flow and manifest. Okay, don't let people keep you from attending church. <laughs> it also manifests as an overall lacking excitement for spiritual things that once used to get you excited. All right. Perhaps you aren't as excited about evangelism as you once were, or maybe you aren't as committed to build your faith on God's word for divine healing, miracles, divine healing, soul winning. Those things are what should fire up us and fire up our spirits and get us excited because that's building the kingdom of God. This isn't about this world and our lives. God's desire, I've already told you a million times, well, maybe not a million times, but a lot of times on this channel in these devotions, God's plan in Jeremiah 29, 11 are to prosper you, to not harm you, and to give you hope in a future. That's his plan for your life. Anything other than that is the enemy's interference, our poor choices, things happening that um, God did not intend, but he still wants to bless you despite the things you've done. He still wants to bless you. He still wants to prosper you, to not harm you, and to give you hope in a future. That's his plan. Waking up in the spirit is like waking up in the natural. It means you have to decide to rise up when you don't feel like it sometimes. But once you do, how many times do we want to lay in that bed and not get up? Same thing in the spirit. We have to get up. Once you do, your metabolism gets going, and before you know it, you're out facing the day with renewed zeal. It's the same thing in the spirit. Make a decision to shake off all subtle forms of spiritual lethargy. If you see it creeping in before long, you will find yourself back in the light of Christ, getting fresh revelation and impartation from heaven. I know how challenging this can be, guys. I, you know, for years and years and years, my morning time with the Lord was robbed from me because I had a go, go, go schedule. I'm one of those ones. Um, if I've got anything else that's happening that day, um, I'm distracted. I have to get and It's, it's part of my work ethic. It's part of, you know, when I knew I had to be at work at a certain time, I didn't want to be dragging out the door late. And I didn't feel that I had the luxury of that time in the morning. And then when I got home, you know, it was like, okay, all the other things were distracting me or pulling me away from it. Now, mind you, I'm having conversations with God all day long and I still heard from the Lord. I still had relationship with the Lord, but the quality of my time with the Lord wasn't where it should have been. And therefore I wasn't hearing him as clearly. And I was always actively involved in the church and leadership and I worked for a ministry for, you know, over 21 years. So I was surrounded by ministry and the Holy Spirit, you know, and, and there was chapels in the middle of the day. And so, you know, these are luxuries that I had. And I, maybe I took all that for granted. I don't know. But I know that I was lacking something in that personal time with the Lord. And, you know, I just want to encourage you. This, your relationship with God is personal. It's personal. Don't look for the loophole or the excuse, you know, because... God wants what he had with Adam and Eve in the garden. That's what he wants with us. There was no church. There was no anything in the garden. It was him and Adam walking together in the cool of the day. Him, Adam, and Eve walking together in the cool of the day. That's what he wants. But he's also gifted us with things. We need the encouragement of our brothers and sisters in Christ. We need to know that there are other people that believe the way that we do, that can be there to lift us up, that we can turn to when we need prayer, you know? And I mean, there's a lot of hurt and wounded people. I, I attend church with a lot of hurt and wounded people. And, you know, God is able to minister to them. Your presence there, using your giftings God gave you to build the body um, is so important. 
being faithful with, with what he's given you. It is so important. And know that everyone else is not perfect, just like you're not perfect. The mistakes are going to be made. Things are going to be said. We just have to continue to lift up the body of Christ. God loves his bride and he's, he's, he's going to clean house. He's cleaning house. <laughs> he's cleaning house. And he's going to let those who um, have, you know, faltered, those who are stumbling, he's going to bring them. He's going to bring them along and help them to see and awaken them. So let him awaken you. Let him awaken your spirit and then see where that takes you in your walk with Christ. I understand completely. I'm totally there. <laughs> Let's pray the prayer. Heavenly Father, I make a choice to wake up in the spirit today. I shake off all signs of spiritual lethargy and I awake once again to renewed zeal. I ask that the light of Christ would shine afresh over all areas in my life that have grown dim. In Jesus' name, amen. Well, God bless you. Thank you again for spending a little bit of time with me. I hope you feel encouraged today. God bless you and thank you. Bye until next time.